Namaste and welcome to Cutting Chai. Today we are going to meet Sadashiv Nayak, the Big Bazaar Joint CEO of South and East. He is an MBA from XLRI and joined Asian Paints in 1993, then Hindustan Levers in 1998 and Future Group in 2004. Let's go meet him and have a cup of Cutting Chai with him. Namaste Sadashiv. Namaste. So 150 stores plus and still growing. Yeah. Wow. What a long journey. Yes, absolutely. So where do you see Big Bazaar, say, two years from now? Where do you see retail about two years from now? So uh, uh, we have a very aggressive plan uh, lined up for the whole country. We have, uh, we have a visibility of around 70 odd stores which we plan to open. Um, but given uh, the track record of real estate shaping up the way we want, uh, we, are, we can safely say that we should be targeting around 45 to 50 new big bazaars. Over and above that, I think there are some newer formats which we are kind of looking at. Uh, you would have seen the food hall. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. We also looked at uh, uh, kind of introducing uh, some better elements, uh, more aspirational elements to some of existing stores. So that's a journey which will, which is ongoing and will continue. But by and large, retail, um, I think the sunrise is just rising further and I think we have a very exciting set of stores which are going to open an exciting set of markets which are going to open in the next few years. So 150 stores yeah. and yet there's a uniformity in them. What are the challenges? How do you make it so uniform? Okay, I mean let's look at this store. I mean let's look at this store. I mean I don't see what is uniform here. Uh, I think we need to kind of filter out when we say uniformity what we are really referring to. Mm -hmm. To me, uniformity, if I put the shoes of the consumer and if I'm going to buy some bed sheets from here, I think the uniformity should be in a position to tell me to make this decision may go simpler. Yeah. So I should know where exactly my double bed sheets are, where my single bed sheets are. Um, and that to me is uniformity, which really aids the whole consumer decision process. But beyond that, uniformity is something which uh, I don't think is an achieved goal. For us, we are looking at efficiency, we are looking at productivity, and we are making sure that the customer decision is facilitated much stronger. And uh, and you know, uh, she is delighted with the range we have. So, at times when you would see something which is not so uniform, if you look at the uh, heap of pillows here, if you look at the heap of detergents there, I think there is an intention to really either cross sell or there is an intention to upsell. So, to my mind, uniformity is not a goal by itself; it's a journey. And as long as the journey is really aiding productivity for us and aiding the consumer uh, decision, I think we are absolutely okay if some of them are not really falling in the standard cap of uniformity. So what you're saying is that there is a method in this madness. I don't think it is madness. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go back, uh, and this is this is what has really caused the foundation mm -hmm. uh, for Big Bazaar um, and uh, uh, successful hypermarket that we are. Um, um, I think there is a particular flow in which we are arranging our merchandise. Madness would be something if we didn't look at basic hygiene, if we didn't really respect the consumer decision process, if it kept things all over and hoped that the consumer would find a product. I think we've crossed that stage. Uh -huh. If you go to any of our section, there will be a particular flow in which the merchandise will flow. If you look at the television, there will be LCDs somewhere, there will be LEDs somewhere. So in my mind, um, there is uh, the hygiene level of uniformity required to help aid the consumer decision process. Over and above that, I think we've got dollops of excitement and consumer engagement which you've created. And that I think is something which is a, uh, I would say a unique uh, selling proposition which, have, which we have in Big Bazaar. Okay, that uh, where people are concerned, there is a cultural uniformity. When I say cultural uniformity, you're greeted with a namaste or you're greeted with a namaskar. There is a uniformity where, where, where people yeah. are concerned and I'm sure Big Bazaar is doing something about it. So what is it? What makes them, you know? culturally different and yet at the same time similar? 
Uh, I think as we're walking, we're walking across right across the future capital halls. Mm -hmm. If you notice, it's sitting right in the middle of the store. Uh, it belongs to another of her group company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right next to the electronics store. This is really meant to reassure the consumer that if you're trying to make a large purchase and if you're kind of looking for some finance options, we have it here. Now, why I stopped and spent a little time here is really to tell you that I think it's something which is unique in the group where something as diverse and as different as Future Capital gets internalized inside the store called Big Bazaar. Uh, I, I think there are two or three things. One, the entire DNA of building consumption and really driving a lot of consumer satisfaction is something which is inherently there in the system. Second is I think we have kind of articulated our values very well and there are enough and more options where we kind of talk about it either officially or otherwise, uh, the entire values. And third really is this whole thing of uh, uh, let me say, having making people extremely accessible. I mean, today um, I, I am accessible to anyone in this store. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone in this store is as accessible to me. There, there are boundaries, but they are boundaries which are kind of poor, not cast in stone. So if you put these three together, where we have got extremely strong articulated values and enough forums to kind of cascade mm -hmm. them, uh, a very informal structure and very informal way of communication. And third, really, is the con consumption uh, being the cultural DNA.